Ahoy bringers! Welcome to your next tutorial. Uh, what we're going to do in today's tutorial is uh, set up our collision with our item. So the first thing that we're going to do is go into the item class and under our update method we are going to uh, what we're going to do? Set up our collision like I said. So we're actually going to cut out this code here which was a collision for our platform and I'm going to quickly kind of describe what we're going to do um, to you know process this collision and kind of overview what we did with the collision for the platform as well. So I'm going to open up some uh, Photoshop action here and when we checked for collision with our platform what we did is we found the center of our ball which is just position XY and then we said hey we want to move down the radius so we're getting just this one pixel at the bottom and that's the only pixel that we're checking for collision so you know when our ball moves down this would classify as a collision you know anything within the platform would classify as a collision but you know if it was just one pixel below our platform it would not count as a collision even though you know obviously it looks like they're colliding so that's one of the problems that we had with this way of you know setting up our collision uh, with our ball and our platform it's only checking one pixel but uh, to get a little bit more fancy what we can do is hide out those and open up our two items our ball and our item here we're going to use Pythagorean's Theorem uh, to check between the collision of our ball and our two items here. So, you know, that's a great thing to remember back in the math when you're like, oh, what is this Pythagorean's Theorem thing? When am I ever going to use this? Um, it's great for checking colliding balls. So that's what she said, but um, it's great for it. So just keep that in mind. The first thing that we're going to do is we have our two items. They're both circular and we draw them to the screen according to the XY position which is in the center. Each of these balls also have a radius so uh, we know that as well. So let's go to the next step. Oops, I'm supposed to hide those two. Alright, as you can see my art skills are crazy. And uh, so these are our two items, our two balls, and they each have a radius you know of something you know different for our, for our actual player ball, it's going to be a pixel radius of 20, and for our item ball, it's going to be a pixel radius of 10. Let's go back to this one real quick. As you can see, all right. As you can see, um, back to our previous example, we're going to have you know if it's colliding, this line here is going to be a length of 30 because again, our radius for our larger ball is 20. The radius for our smaller ball is uh, 10. So anywhere we move around this from the center of you know our larger ball to the center of our smaller ball if they're just barely touching it's going to be a distance of 30 right um, no matter where it is so that's what we're going to check for we're going to get use Pythagorean's theorem we're going to check the distance from this center ball to this center ball and if it's less than 30 we know that it's going to be colliding um, hopefully that makes some sense so let's get into a little bit of the math where I'll go back to that other image I had up here. So no matter where a ball is, we're going to get the X and Y position of each ball. And then what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the X positioning from you know this ball to this ball. And that's going to give us our A right here. And then we're going to say see what the Y positioning is for each ball. We're going to subtract those. And that's going to give us B right here. And then Pythagorean's theorem says A squared plus B squared equals, don't look at the screen, it's wrong right now. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So that's Pythagorean's theorem. So we're going to basically find out, find our C. And again, our C, as you can see here, is the distance between the center of our larger or our player ball and the center of our item. So if the, our C is less than 30, then we know that, uh, you know, the balls are colliding. Makes sense? All right. So let's get into the coding. Enough with all the art. So let's go into our again our item class and we have our check for collision here and again we got the information from our ball this is the player ball so we have ball X ball Y radius um, of that so we're good to go there or right, we're gonna set up some new ants just to keep it kind of uh, you know familiar with the last you know little graphic I showed you otherwise that would have just been pointless and just wasting your guys time so we're gonna set a equal to be X which is the x position of our item minus x or uh, ball x, which is our player x position. All right, and then we can set up int b is equal to y minus 
our ball y position or we'll create another int that is going to be called collide we're going to set this equal to our ball radius so we're going to say uh, radius here Oops. we're actually going to change this uh, right here to be ball r instead so that's going to be our player ball radius um, again we just set it up with this method here so what we're going to do is we're going to say our radius of our item class plus the radius of our ball so like I said that will be a value of something like 30 right um, so if our collide is or if our you know our distance from the center of our two balls our item ball and our player ball is less than this collide then we know a collision actually happened the next thing that we have to do is we have to set up our C so we're gonna set up an int C is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared um, because again we have this equation here so if we wanted to get our c we'd have to cross out our two here and then just throw a square root over here and that will be equal to our c which is again the distance between the centers of our two balls so we're going to set c equal to the math function or the math class square root and it takes a double so the first thing that we're going to do is set up our first variable our a the square root of a and since it takes a double, we're going to pass or cast our a as a double. So this equation will work. We'll say double a and then squared plus um, double uh, b uh, squared. And that's just, like for example, say, again, we're going to have to use the math function to call the square root of this. Or we could just say a times a, right? makes sense alright so we'll take a times a within its own parentheses for you know tutorial sake and then also our b times b and there we go the last thing that we're gonna do is change our c to be a double as well whoops because again this square root method is going to return a double for us so we probably want to set up our variable as a double so this will be the distance if you guys want to uh, you know leave a comment distance between objects centers um, something like that so you guys can leave a note what error are we getting now this is stupid alright so we're gonna go where did we use B before oh ball can't use this because again we changed our, uh, or we passed in a ball B. So we're going to say BB, ABB, and we're going to throw that in there instead. So, you know, just because our ball object was also labeled B, we have to have our int object um, as BB. So there we go. Um, and the next thing, lastly, what we're going to do is check for a collision. What we're going to do is we're going to say if c again this is the distance between the centers is less than collide um, what are we going to do well we are going to perform action and we haven't set this up yet um, this will be the unique feature of you know whatever this will be like a gravity up we'll change the gravity or whatever else um, but we're just gonna you know create that method first and so all the classes that extend this item class can use uh, their own variation of this action perform class but all of our collisions should you know work out and just for example to make sure it works we're gonna set X again the X referring to our item X to be 0 and also our Y to be 0 and we'll comment these out later but we're just checking to see if we have some sort of a collision working um, Oops, oh, and I messed up uh, quickly. Um, before we run it, uh, also, this was supposed to be the ball's radius, not the ball X, so make sure you change that as well. Space it out. I don't know. It's crazy. Long day, no sleep. Working hard for Santa. Just got the best of me. All right, so there we go. We have radius uh, plus the ball radius, which will again will be at like a value of 30, something like that. Um, so let's save this, run it, and hopefully we get a collision. So let's uh, let's check that out. So, whoops, missed that one. Oh, see, it's gone, guys. So it looks like that worked. Um, and we are actually, um, it's a better 
collision detection than, like I said, the square example, because for the square example, we we're just checking for one pixel, whereas uh, this is checking for pretty much the collision spot on because that works. Um, and again, that uh, works because they're balls. And Pythagorean theorem is just great with balls. So I'll catch you guys later and have a good one. Something called Pythagorean. I'm going to use something called Pythagorean's, Pythagorean's theorem. Is that right? We're going to use some math. Um, 